face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up guys and of course welcome back to another episode of the Who Wants It Really Better. Now before we go into this video I do want to leave you guys with a small update about my life. As you guys may or may not know from my previous video, I do have become a father to a very, very beautiful girl named Celeste. And uh, she had been taking a lot of time from me for doing videos, and quite frankly, that is to be expected. Definitely having to shift my priorities, and I don't mind at all. But this series is definitely the one guaranteed thing that will come up every week, no matter what. And I do as much of a pre-recording as I can, actually, to be able to actually provide this content for you till I get my life together with, of course, the circumstances that are, which is very, very, very nice. So I'm very thankful that you guys are sticking around, even though I haven't been able to upload as much. But though hopefully that will change a little bit from now on. This video series definitely is one of those things that definitely will come up every week. Now, we upload this video actually one day early because of Christmas. I do want you guys to enjoy your families and relevant ones instead of watching YouTube, which I probably won't because I won't. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, I do want this upload a day early, basically. So yeah, with that said, let's go over the matchup of the day. Saucebuck versus Gogoat is a very, very cool matchup, mainly because Saucebuck and Gogoat are very much alike when it comes to both attacks that how they actually function to some extent and also the moves they get. They're very, very much alike and uh, they've been on par with one another as an offensive grass type though covering different fields and it's up to me to go over their stats, abilities and move pool to see which one of these two really are better. But we're gonna start off with Saucebuck, and it's it's Saucebuck's typing in mind before going over the stats themselves. So basically because it was introduced first, that is. So hit it up with the Saucebuck. Now when it comes to Saucebuck, it actually is a very strange type combination in normal and grass and being the only one at that. Now grass type primarily is to be defined as somewhat defensive with a lot of weaknesses involved with it. Uh, which means we're resistant in electric, grass, ground, and water. So fairly common things here. But we are weak to bug, fire, flying, ice, and poison. Now with the normal typing, you get a, one other weakness in finding. We also get one immunity in ghost. But what this basically means is that normal typing doesn't necessarily prevent anything for Soul Spice defensively to work better. While it does give it a different stab in mind, it still is a stab that doesn't necessarily help it all too much. And having another weakness is, since it's already a broader variety of weaknesses really pushes Pokemon back somewhat but this Pokemon is not supposed to take hits in the first place anyway so we're gonna go over why Saucebug is that good as it is. One thing that really stands out for Saucebug is its balanced stats actually. While it does have some peaking it is still not a broad variety of peaking and overall it could be definitely defined as a more offensive Pokemon with defensive side pawns because let's look at the HP 80 yeah that's fairly high for an offensive Pokemon 100 attack, yeah, that's quite right. 17 both defenses, I would say that's kind of low, but with that high HP, it still is definitely defined as somewhat defensive. Special attack at 60, yeah, not necessarily going to use that. Speed at 95, making this Pokemon fairly speedy actually, but it isn't the speediest and definitely isn't barring the one that are in base 100. But 95 definitely ensures it's speedier than most tanks and of course defensive Pokemon and can take them on fairly alright, making Soul Spike one of those really really niche offensive Pokemon in the lower tiers but also overall in the league play. And when it comes to the abilities, here's where Soul Spike kind of shines. Chlorophyll, yeah that's a really nice, uh, to be able to actually run Adamant and capitalize on actually having a lower speed but still be able to have speed the ones that are scarfed at base 110 due to chlorophyll will make soul spike a very 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 scary threat to deal with sap sisper also there of course boosting the attack with one stage that's always going to be relevant and serene grace which boosts your effectiveness of different moves extra effects such of course the likes of headbutt going for flames of 30 percent to 60 percent so overall while the serene grace is not a Ability that has been using quite a lot because it doesn't have that many moves that actually uses it. It's actually got that in this game in Ultra Sun and Moon, making Serene Grace a viable option towards Saucebug. So, with that said, let's of course look at Saucebug's move pool. Saucebug has for a grass Pokemon actually a broad variety of moves. What I mean by that is that usually grass type is 
well defensive, and due to that doesn't have the broad variety to hit everything super effectively, I do believe Sourcebuck is one of those really niche Pokemon where we get a broad variety of moves, but also get supporting sets to cover it if it needs to go defensive. As it was said before, its stat will allow it to go defensive, so it's very very cool that it got an option. So overall here we got Horn Leech, which is going to be your bread and butter, where it's like Green Punch basically, Mega Horn, which is a very good strong move for out of grass type, we're able to force them out to jump kick, it's super nice for the Pokemon to steel type who usually walls the grass in normal combination. Having jump kick, yeah, that's pretty pretty freaking cool actually. Aroma therapy to get away with status. The leak seed you're gonna go for a defensive route, you will be able to do so. Nature power, why not use that? In a grassy terrain, for example, it will be a 60% chance of sleeping, so that's always nice. Double edge, if you don't want to go return, double edge is the option here, and since Soul Spike attack is fairly low, Double Edge is usually the better option between the two to get rid of the likes of Horn Leech to get the HP back. Shadow Ball, yeah, that's for one Pokemon only, the Gengars and Hunters. Definitely works really well there. Thunder Wave, it's a good defensive option. Instead of before, Serene Grace and Headbutt, yeah, they're just gonna keep going. It's basically the para flinching toe kiss, but in a different form. Soul Stance, yeah, I don't need to explain that at all. Boosting yourself, yeah, that's nice. Wild Charge, yeah, I don't think it needs to deploy any either. Very, very good coverage for if you want to capitalize on actually hitting flying types. And of course, with Electric Electrium C, it could be capitalized on very all right. Energy Ball, yeah, decent coverage. Baton Pass, while banning Smoke and Tears in, um, what do you call it, the League Play, it could be used as piloting, and for that, it's actually kind of nice. Grass Whistle to, of course, enforce in Sleep. Headbutt, yeah, all define that. Synthesis, get good recovery, agility. Bounce, which actually is fairly right, since of course it's a Fly MC variant here. You can capitalize on Bounce and do a good amount of damage towards the actual Fly and type can hit you super effectively. Stomping Tantrum is your only ground coverage. Usually, ground coverage is fairly alright to have against the lights of steel times you can be facing, but as I said before, Jump Kick overall should be acknowledged as a better option, but you will also face off against poison types, so the coverage there is quite alright. And the Seed Bomb. Just to mention, if you want extra power, usually Horn Leech solves more, so I definitely recommend Horn Leech over the others. But overall, one could say that Soul Spike's primary function is to be a good offensive Pokemon with Soul Sands to be able to hit super effectively or at least harder than everything it can be facing. The speed tier does allow it to do a lot of damage and aren't necessarily threatened out by speed alone. It has agility, it has chlorophyll, and usually it's always going to go offensive and have the moves to pull that off. So overall, I would say Soul Spike is a very, very tremendous threat. It is a bit on the weak side, but Soul Sands does allow it to function very, very, very well. So with that said, it is where not actually Gogo can compete with this, because Soul Spike is a very complete Pokemon, just like I said, a bit on the weak side, even though it could have been very, very viable, and definitely with the abilities in mind. Now before we cover Gogo, I'm just going to mention the type of the Gogo to represent, which is pure grass. As stated before, this means that you just get the benefit of the grass typing and not the normal typing. As stated before, normal typing didn't benefit necessarily the grass typing all that much. So with that in mind, we're looking at Pokemon here who has to resist it in electric grass, ground and water, but are weak to five typings now, of course, in bug, fire, flying, ice and poison. Overall, Definitely should be stated here that grass type usually are defined as defensive, but the typing itself are a bit of a mixed bag and you really are matchup dependent if you want to capitalize on a pure grass type to work around the opposing team. That said though, does this typing benefit Go Goats? And of course it does. Look at the stats there. Look at those stats. Gogoat is one of those really, really weird Pokemon where you can't pinpoint how it's supposed to be used, but you look in the pony pools, you look upon the stats and realize that, yeah, this is a bulky Pokemon. This is a fairly bulky Pokemon. 133 in, in HP. Yeah, that's fairly all right. HP at 100, same as Soul Spike actually. 62 in defense, so it's a bit on the lower side. 97 in special attack, and that is also fairly high. Definitely works a possible special and mixed attacker. 81 in special defense, a bit bulkier than Saucebug, but are slower at 68 base speed. Yeah, that's more of a tanky Pokemon than an offensive one. So we're just as strong as Saucebug, but we are bulkier and hit harder on the special side, but aren't necessarily speed enough to pull off the offensive role that well. And when it comes to its abilities, it gets Zap Super as same as Saucebug, which is a very viable option because look at that 100 attack. Yeah, getting that boosted, it's going to be dangerous. We've also have Grass Pelt. Grass Pelt means that in terrain, 
you will get a defense boost in both defense and special defense by 50%, which is really, really, really good. Because what that basically allows it is like, well, it works like a roar appeal, basically. You get a defense boost to be able to actually set up and do stuff, because this is something that Saucepack can't necessarily do, that it's setting up safely. This is something Gogurt can do due to this mixed ball to get out a very, very high HP stat. So, very good ability. While Sap Zipper would be deemed better between the two, if you have a plan with, of course, the grassy terrain in mind, this could be an extremely viable option. But the fun doesn't just end there because we have a move pool to talk about, and quite frankly, they do share a lot of moves with one another. I do believe that is to be expected. So, we have Air Lace, we have Earthquake, Synthesis, Seed Bomb, Bulk Up, which is a very viable move towards Gogo since it has a low defense, be able to bulk up and boost our tank. Yeah, that's very nice. It's not a sword stance, but it is a setup move. We have a double edge here too. We, of course, have Horn Leech, which is going to be our bread and butter more often than not. We have a Leaf Lady who want to capitalize on extra power. We have Milk Drink, which is definitely the superior between Synthesis and Milk Drink, since Milk Drink has more PP and aren't reliant off of weathers to be able to be boosted or nerfed. Brick Break, while it's not a jump kick, it is a fair option to use. Wild Charge, same to actually as I would say to um, Source Park, to be able to cover flying types with Wild Charge is always going to be nice, even though Gogoth has other options. Energy Ball, very fair here. Payback, yeah, since you're slower, you could capitalize on that. Rock Slide, which is usually the better coverage, uh, mainly because it does mean you hit the um, bug type super effectively as well as fire types. So, very decent coverage if you don't want to capitalize on Earthquake. Grass Knot, just a filler move. Surf, which is something you can use well due to the extra high special attack. Grassy Train is something that learns naturally, uh, which was something it didn't do to actually this generation. Then we have Super Power. While it is just as strong as Jump Kick, it will lower your attack and defense, but it is a very viable option towards Go Go. Or actually, I believe it's effectively 120 base, so it is stronger in Jump Kick. Sun Headbutt, fair option for, of course, the psychic type you can be facing. Iron Tail, just a filler move at best. Kick it rain, something you can use with in case you don't want to go with a Horn Leech and a physical set. Bounce, same as, um, same as actually a Soul Spike here, that it is a decent cover for Fly MC. And it also gets Stomping Tantrum like Soul Spike, though Earthquake will overall be your better option. So overall, Gogurt's function is actually to be a bit more of a bulkier, tanky Pokemon than Saucepack. Its primary rule is basically to set up bulk up, milk drink, it has the filler moves to actually thread and Pokemon out, and we have 100 base attack. It is a Pokemon that not only so hits, but with Horn Leech, it can recover quite a lot, making actually Gogurt a very, very strange threat to be dealing with, because not only does it fill the potential of being a more offensive Pokemon than Soulspike due to having a broader move pool, its defensive typing, while I said before, is very matchup dependent, is more able to actually set up and do well than Soulspike is doing. Gogo overall is a very, very tanky Pokemon and has a broad move pool to be able to capitalize on a lot of matchup fairly all right. And with Milk Drink and whatnot, it does potentially have the failure to do fairly all right. Even with Substitute Milk Drink Toxic set works very good with Gogo due to the variety the Pokemon does represent. While the strongest set is Horn Leech to get with Bulk Up and Substitute and possibly Earthquake or Rock Slide, it is a Pokemon that overall does really well naturally because its stats allow it to stay in, which is something Source Pack necessarily can't do. So what this dialogue comes down to is basically if the extra bulk on Gogoth is better than the extra speed on the source bug. And to some extent, I want to say yes. I definitely believe that Gogoth, due to the extra HP, does bring a broad variety to the Pokemon itself and be able to do a lot more well versus a lot more matchups. That said, we have Chlorophyll on Source Park, and I definitely believe this is going to push it towards the edge. It is whether or not the Chlorophyll Sweeper variant is better than Gogoth. And I would say so. Sword Stance and of course the filler moves that is in variety here definitely does enforce it to be a lot stronger threat than Gogurt can be in this moment tiers. However, we also have another aspect that I definitely want to look at and that's going to be the leak place. And here is where I start to change my opinion because yeah, Saucepack has the variety to be a very very good Chlorophyll Sweeper and I said before, it is the superior set between them two, but it doesn't have the same variety as I would say Gogoth has, because Gogoth has the bulk to be defensive, it has the bulk to be offensive, and it has the variety to move pull and hitting more Pokemon super effectively really well. The thing is here, Sourcebug's sadly typing 
holds it back because it definitely isn't a defensive type wing. It is very fragile naturally due to this. Gogot has that issue, but it's not as bleedingly heavy abundant on it as it is on Sports. Gogot actually can thrive in this environment. And with Grass Pelt, this Pokemon can actually set up much, much more safer, making it disappear your Pokemon between these two. And bear with me on this because I know that this type combination really, really are debatable because, yeah, a few people you might actually say that, yeah, normal typing actually are helped by the grass typing because, of course, not being walled out by, of course, the likes of rock types. And I would say so to some extent, but we're looking upon two Pokemon here who go in to do um, roles that are very, very much alike. And if only one set are superior and being actually a chlorophyll sweeper, then we are having a problem here because that means that Gogot wins in every other matchup due to this because there only is one set that are better, the other ones are defied by Gogot. Gogot is a defensive beast that I think are very, very underrated. The milk drink variety here does allow it to be bulky, the grass belt allows it to set up, and just overall there are so many variants of Gogot to make it superior. While Soulspark has the option to be offensive to some extent, it definitely can pull the defensive role at all, and when Gogot actually pulling that off due to its extra abilities, and of course extra bulk it provides, it is very clear here that Gogot has the option to not only surpass Saucebuck, but be actually a tremendous threat towards any team if played right, which is something I don't believe Saucebuck has the luxury of pulling off making it, that Gogot is simply that good. So I definitely would say that Gogot is an underrated Pokemon in a league play and would definitely recommend that Pokemon because of the variety it brings to the table. I definitely believe that there are a lot of good grass types and I definitely would put Gogot among them if anything. So with that said, what do you guys think? Which Pokemon did you think of these two that really was better? Be sure of course to write that down below and I do what I enjoyed of course reading it because this is a tough matchup and I definitely believe it could have gone either way. So with that said, join us next week for a matchup I've been longing for due for quite some times. So see you next week guys and enjoy this.